Now, living without regrets is a tricky thing to do these days, especially if you're a bond investor, especially if you're Bill Gross. He told the Financial Times that he was wrong to tell others to avoid U.S. Treasuries. Our next guest says he's glad he didn't listen to Bill, but he's still reducing his exposure in other areas of the credit market. Krishna Mamani oversees $70 billion as director of fixed income at Oppenheimer Funds, and he joins us here in the studio. Uh, thanks for spending some time with us, Krishna. Let Good me, morning. Let me ask you what you mean by that. I mean, you're, you're reducing your exposure in other areas of the credit market, so where is that? Uh, in corporate credit market, again, let me uh, clarify that a little bit. We are reducing our exposure, but we are still long. And uh, what we are trying to deal with is the prospect of credit markets being relatively cheap, but uh, at the same time, uh, the potential that the economy may slow down to a level that would be very uncomfortable if you were long a lot of credit. Because, Krishna, you have $70 billion under assets, about $5 billion of which are treasuries. I mean, we have to let you brag a little bit because, I mean, at some point you'll be you wrong, got it but right. so far this year, you've been right on. Uh, yes, and, and I'm, I'm happy that I am right. Uh, the, the way we have thought about treasuries is not necessarily we think they offer tremendous value. What they act as is a, a sort of a hedge against the potential of the rest of the asset classes slowing down or uh, underperforming. And that's how we have structured our portfolios and has worked so out so far. So you had a nice big cushion as far as your funds go this year. Exactly. It sort of acts as a cushion on the downside if uh, your credit bets don't work out, for example. Your $5 billion in treasuries kind of reminds me of Warren Buffett's uh, recent investment in Bank America, but of course he's making a lot more money there. Where do you go for yield like that? I mean, where do you find it? Is it still out there uh, or is it very too risky for you? Uh, well, yield in the market is basically in credit assets in one form or the other, high yield, loans, uh, investment grade. But is the high yield play too too risky for you? As you say, you know, when it get, you get uncomfortable when the global economy slows down like Sure. This. Uh, we still like the credit markets. We, we think credit offers tremendous value, and I think the likelihood that we get into a double dip is still, it's a probability, but still a, a, a low probability event. So we still like credit markets. We are long credit. Credit. It's just that we have to recognize the fact that given the data flow that we have seen, there is some potential that the economy may slow down and double dip. A low probability, but a non-zero probability. Krishna, you're a regular on the inside track, but we haven't spoken with you since Fed Chief Ben Bernanke spoke at Jackson Hole. Did anything in his comments change what you're planning to do with your investments? Uh, no, I, I think it reinforced the, uh, the thinking that the likelihood that a QE3 would be imminent is probably small, but I think at the same time, uh, the, the comments in Jackson Hole and the interview that uh, uh, President Evans gave yesterday sort of indicated that they are very, they are going to be very proactive. So at the, uh, while the, uh, the, the actions may not be as forceful as before uh, or as expected, but I think there may be something forthcoming in very quick order. So what do you expect uh, the Fed to actually do then? I mean, it, if not QE3, does it lower the interest it pays in excess reserves? Does it move out further on the yield curve? Uh, I, I think lowering uh, re uh, interest payments on reserves is, may end up being counterproductive. So I don't think they do that. Uh, because what? Because it hurts... Uh, uh, it money hurts markets. banks. It hurts money market, uh, money markets, and it creates unnecessary tension in that market. I think the more likely outcome is that they set, do some sort of targeting, and I think Evans kind of alluded to that. That is, they commit to keeping rates low until unemployment drops to, let's say, seven, seven and a half percent. I think that would be a very profound statement. That's really using communications as a very important policy tool, giving the market some direction, some confidence as to how low rates can be, and it's not a specific time frame, it's uh, anchored into something concrete seven, in the economy. Seven percent, seven and a half percent unemployment. Since we're talking about percents, how low can the yield go, Krishna, before we let you go on the 10-year? Well, I, I think uh, the likelihood in the current circumstances uh, for yields to go substantially below 2 percent, I think, is pretty small. Uh, but if the economy were to slow down meaningfully and we were uh, zero growth or negative growth, I think the likelihood that 10-year uh, rates could be 1 percent is not out of the context. All right, Krishna, thanks so much for joining us. Krishna Mamani there uh, from Oppenheimer Funds.